Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at a study from Japan where postmenopausal women were given NMN over an eight week period, and they saw an improvement in blood biomarkers and skin health. First of all, a quick disclaimer that we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper, Clinical Evaluation of Changes in Biomarkers by Oral Intake of NMN. The study was done in Japan and published in June in Glycative Stress Research. There is a lot of interest in NAD, but not many clinical trials. In this study, they looked at changes in biomarkers in humans after oral intake of NMN. The trial involved 17 healthy postmenopausal women taking 300 milligrams of NMN per day for eight weeks. The NMN was in capsules and taken after breakfast. The markers that they looked at included body measurements, basal metabolic rate, blood pressure, grip strength, glycation level, blood markers, various hormones, blood SIRT1 messenger RNA expression, and NMN, NAD, and NAM levels. Immunological tests and skin quality were also included. So quite a wide range of tests. We will go into what these are in more detail in a minute. The measurements were taken at zero, four, and eight weeks, though the statistical analysis was based on the zero and eight week results. One subject dropped out because of persistent mild headaches. They do not further explore reasons for this in the paper. Key results were an increase in nicotinamide, adiponectin, and skin quality. There was significant difference in BMI, AF levels, platelets, HbA1c, amylase, DHEA, NAD, and regulatory T cells, along with positive subjective feelings on skin, sleep, and fatigue. Their conclusion is that 300 milligrams of NMN showed no safety issues and had a positive impact on many biomarkers. Let's have a look at some of the specific markers in more depth. First, HbA1c. So a quick background on HbA1c. Glucose in the blood reacts with red blood cells in a process known as glycation. The level of glycation of red blood cells is related to the amount of glucose in the blood at any one time. Red blood cells typically live for about 110 days. So measuring the glycation level gives a view of blood sugar levels over the last three months. And a lower level is better. The participants were already in the normal range, which is below 5.7%, but it did further decrease. Other lipid markers, such as LDL, were unchanged, but they did see an increase in HDLC from 67.5 to 72.3 milligrams per deciliter. Here, the reference range is above 50 for women. Two other metabolic markers were adiponectin, this is a hormone secreted by fat cells and helps control blood sugar. It increased from 13.6 to 16.2 micrograms per milliliter. And DHEA is the precursor to many hormones, including the sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone. And it increased from 1,108 to 1,275 nanograms per milliliter, showing better hormonal health. In the immune system, the number of CD4 positive regulatory T cells was increased. I have to admit, I do not understand the immune system sufficiently to explain the benefits of this. They looked at NMN and its metabolites in the blood. NMN showed no increase, and the NAD levels actually decreased from 17.4 to 13.7 nanograms per milliliter. We will come back to their explanation for this later. NAM or nicotinamide saw a significant jump from 45.2 to 164.7 nanograms per milliliter. There was no significant change in SIRT1 activity as measured by messenger RNA levels. Skin autofluorescence decreased. Advanced glycation end products or AGEs are the result of glycation of proteins and are a marker of aging. They have naturally fluorescent properties, and this can be used to measure the level of them in the skin. And we can see here that they decreased from 2.43 to 2.35. Other skin measures were taken through a questionnaire. This is a subjective measure, but we can see a good improvement in all of them, except for the concern over pimples. So why did NAD go down and nicotinamide increase? 
To understand the explanation in the paper, we need to look a little at NAD metabolism. NAD is not absorbed directly from food, but made through two pathways. One of these is the de novo pathway from tryptophan. The other is the salvage pathway. NAD is used in redox reactions and also is a cofactor by sirtuins and ADP ribose enzymes, where it is converted into nicotinamide. NAM is then converted to NMN by NAMPT, which is the rate limiting step in this process. This then goes back to NAD. NMN does not have a long half-life in the blood and is quickly absorbed into the cells and converted to NAD. This additional NAD activates the sirtuins and the PARPs, which consume the NAD and create NAM. As NAMPT is the rate limiting step, the NAM builds up. On the physical side, there was no changes in most of the measures, though the BMI did increase from 23.2 to 23.4. Their conclusion was the improvement in the biomarkers suggests that NMN may be a promising nutritional supplement for longevity. A couple of thoughts on this study. 300 milligrams is quite a low dose, and it was also taken after breakfast. The length of the trial was also quite short, only eight weeks, with not that many participants. I was surprised at the lower NAD levels, and having read the paper's explanation, I can see why it increases nicotinamide, but not why it would reduce NAD. It is certainly possible that I am missing something. It would also have been nice for a more objective measure of skin quality, such as an indentometer. Having said that, it's great to see NMN improving common biomarkers of aging, such as HbA1c, HDLC, and levels of glycation at a very reasonable dose in healthy older adults. And although the skin measurements were by self-evaluation, all except one of them was very positive.